Good morning there, brother. Just here on my uh, morning commute. Trust you're doing well. And the Lord, you've been richly blessed. Truth is, you have been, we have been, that's a fact. And that fact transcends our feelings. I've often considered to myself that, that happiness is very closely linked with our happenstance. What's going on in our life? What's our situation? What's the circumstance? Happiness is happenstance, whereas joy is Jesus. Praise God. And He doesn't change. So our joy shouldn't be greater or lesser, depending on how our day is going. Those were, uh, that was an interesting, uh, interesting podcast there you sent me. <clears throat> Certainly a lot, a lot to be, um, to be noticed and, uh, and reflected on when it comes to the, the foundations of, independent fundamental baptistry baptistism i guess <clears throat> and 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 the the problems are are just being being magnified as time goes on it's it's to the point now where you look around and see what is what is the the prevailing um, image of someone known as an IFB er and uh, I look at myself and I look at the scriptures and I say well if that's IFB then then that ain't me and uh and it's a shame because it's the uh, it's truly the uh, the independent Baptist that has has grown me into to who I am. No, I shouldn't say that. It's the Lord Jesus that has grown me to be who I am. But he did it through uh, internet preachers, and then time spent as a, as a united churchgoer and then independent Baptist and then ultimately internet preachers again and now uh, for the moment at least as far as uh, church attendance goes I'm, I'm back in an independent church with an independent pastor who sometimes has the same thoughts as I do. Distinction is good, especially in the day we live in, but <laughs> to stand with some of these guys known as IFB would be a shame. So what do you do? I used to say before I, uh, I joined an I IFB church, I'm just a Bible-believing Christian, and maybe that, that is just, just all I am. As if that were something you could tag with just. But even Bible-believing has a denominational group that has used that as a heading to distinguish themselves. So what do you do? Well, they were called Christians first at Antioch, so... Maybe I'll just be a Christian. And as we both know, being a Christian 
also has its distinguishing points. What Christ did in his finished work on that cross for me, what Christ is doing as he finishes his work within me and through me. So it makes a man a Christian. Ultimately, it's Christ. That's good. Anymore, it's it's uh, unfortunately become independent fundamentalist Baptists. But we might even drop that independent term because there's all different clubs and sects and groups within what's called independent, and whether they like it or not, they're influenced by one another. <clears throat> The foundations would be the Sword of the Lord camp, the Hiles camp, the, the the Temple camp, the Anderson camp. They all have their own distinguishing points that they like to stand really firmly on and impress upon those that uh, come and join up with them. I guess maybe now that they're all... Uh, or at least have spent a time so uniting and I don't know how you can be a, a congregation and not congregating <clears throat> I guess now though it's uh, you could call them internet fundamentalist Baptists Some of them truly, their their only reach is the internet. Um, that has any significance, waning as it is, though. Um, but others had to, for the sake of upholding mandates, Caesar had to become temporarily. I don't know the state of them anymore. Speaking of the ones locally. But I suspect they are slowly opening up. I've seen reports that they've put out and invites to come back to church where they use terms like restrictions have been lifted. Or even better, our government's allowing us to. We've been given permission to. And that's a crying shame when a group calling themselves first independent secondly fundamental and thirdly baptistic would need permission from Caesar to do anything but I guess if they can't stay independent of one another what hope do they have of being independent from uh, government influence Heck, truly, I believe in a lot of cases, the only thing they're truly independent of is the headship of Christ. Choosing rather to yield themselves to whomsoever is the next one giving orders, making decisions or calls. It's a good point about about Jesus um, being the head of the church. Not even just a point, a hard truth. Biblical fact, reality, Christ is the head of the church. I know I was accused of saying that Christ wasn't qualified to be the pastor, the head of the church. What a stupid thing to accuse a man of. No, what I said was, was Christ would not be qualified in the eyes of the independent Baptist world to be the pastor of an independent Baptist church thanks to the, um, 
methods of the Independent Baptist Church. And of course, we've talked at length. It's the taking of the list of qualities, qualifications, standards that a that a church is to see upon a man who is God called when they appoint him to the work of the ministry that Christ selected him to. And of course, they go to the list in Timothy and Titus, and they they say, "Oh yes, this man is patient. Oh yes, this man." does rule well his own house. Oh yes, this man does. And they see all of these things in a man and they say, I'll choose this man. Christ though always was head of all things. And so what a crying shame it would be for him to be literally the one who shed his precious blood for the church. To come down here, let's say, the scope of our imaginations and to dwell upon earth even if just for a few days and to walk into an independent Baptist church and to say I'm here to be your pastor I see that there is a need and they would say well let us meet your wife oh I have no wife truly my wife is the bride truly this congregation here is my wife. Oh, married to the church, you say. Mm. So then I suspect no wife means no children. Christ might say, oh, but my children are spiritual. All of these who believe on me are my mother, my father, my child, brothers and sisters. Oh, oh, I, I, I see spiritual children, you say. Mm. Well, us and the deacon board here have consulted with the checklist found in Timothy and Titus, and it seems, Mr. Um, let me see this resume, uh, Jesus, you say, it seems, good sir, that while you are without blame, blameless, while you are quite patient, Indeed, you, you fit all of these qualifications as far as we see them, but unfortunately, Hoffman, unfortunately, sir, though we think you would do a very fine job at pastoring us, you cannot. Despite you coming to us and saying you have the call of God in your life and have been set by appointment of the Father to do His will. Despite all of these things, you do not have a wife and you do not have children according to the flesh so how could you lead the church of God sir you are disqualified to be a pastor <laughs> I mean, it's 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 no different. It's no different than uh, the the scenario in my mind than than the Jews saying, "We will not have this man rule over us." And truly, not in an actual playing out of of, of events and exchange of words there as I'm seeing in my mind, truly the church has done that at large. We will not have this Jesus to reign over us. They wouldn't say that in words, but their, their inability to acknowledge Christ as the head is evident in their methodologies and those that they put over top of any kind of divine leadership that may happen to trickle into their midst so he says in Ephesians 4 and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the 
work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man unto the measure and of the stature of the fullness of Christ and so the he there of course points back to having the fact that we have one Lord one faith one baptism one God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all, but unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And he gave some. So it's Christ that has given the gift. Some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. These gifts of calling of God are without repentance. He, he, he selects and chooses according to his own will who would do his will. He empowers them afterwards both to will and to do of his good pleasure in whatsoever vocation, calling, gift, grace he has appointed them to. And that's how he orders his church. Amen and amen. And he does it for the perfecting of the saints, to complete saints, to build up saints until they come to unity in fullness of the knowledge and stature of Christ. That's pretty amazing idea of what the perfect man is. Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Talk about standards. <laughs> the fullness of Christ is your only standard and is the only goal and is the only barometer for perfection as this context is speaking. Funda Methodist <clears throat> refuses such headship. And so the Funda Methodist <clears throat> chooses men not based on their appointment or call of God and the grace that comes upon them that they could be apostles, they could be evangelists, they could be pastors and teachers. No, as we've discussed in brief, they, they select them based on a need. <clears throat> oh, we, we, we need more pastors. So bring men to the college and teach them to be pastors. Oh, we need more pastors. So arrange for classes within the church where they can guide men on that direction oh we need more missionaries or evangelists there's a course for that as well there's a need there's a need there's a need let's find men to fill those needs let's qualify them based on a checklist and a method that we have adopted and created for the purpose it's in this way that we have a bunch of funda methodists before us and in this world and it's a big problem you don't need to look further than the original methodists at least in our time frame the Wesleys may have started with good intentions, but look what happened with the methods of holiness that they have created. To-dos for themselves, maybe to help them, guiding principles that they came up with in order to guide them. But the methods of man become Methodism as you see it today. And they couldn't be further from holiness. 
they can't call themselves Christians. And so what will the end of end of the Baptist be as they've become funda Methodists themselves? Oh, this is how we do this. Oh, this is how we do that. Our tradition says we will. This is what we we haven't done it any other way and we will not deviate from the old paths. <clears throat> but what if Christ shows up and says to you, Hey fellas, toss your net in on the other side. Try the right side this time. The fun of Methodist, Peter would say, not so, Lord. We've been we've been casting this way all the night. It's the only way truly we know to do it. This is the way that works best for us. It's tried and true, it's proven. Jesus says, oh, so where is the fruit? Oh, it's coming. You just don't see it. It's spiritual fruit. Hmm. And of course, I don't believe gain is godliness, but there's about a lot to be said of the bounty of fishes that came up that day. No, no, no. Wholeheartedly, I believe Ephesians 4. There is one body, there is one spirit, even as ye are called, one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. I wonder what that hope of our calling is. Could it be the perfection? Could it be the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ? <clears throat> that's my hope. And that's the hope of my calling. <clears throat> and I think... Uh, I think our methods are, are hurting us. It might be good to have manners and methods within the home. It might be good to have some manners and methods within the church. Personally, have some manners and methods and, and things that you do to keep, keep time. There's nothing wrong with standards, of course. But what's the motive behind them? Of course, the um, as it was mentioned and, and, and thoroughly discussed in that little article, that article you presented almost almost comes off as an expose <laughs> of, of 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 the spiritless works sanctification methods employed by these churches until you look and say, whoa, the author is actually praising these men for these things. But yeah, it is, it is absolutely pertinent we take note of the fruits of what what's called soul winning I'm never going to be in opposition of preaching the gospel in any context I encourage it <clears throat> I don't even necessarily find fault 
in having a method where you select at random or strategically go to different doors in the neighborhood if that's your calling knock the door and ask them of their eternity <clears throat> but is that as a method the only method appropriate and that produces fruit or is it simply one calling that one could get upon but another could grab another calling and get upon his way I mean I know a gentleman in my town here that he sits on a bench most days of the week in one of our busiest parks and simply asks people that walk by questions of their eternity I don't know if he is IFB perhaps he's not and that's why he sits on a bench instead of knocking a door the methods are different of his ministry the Apostle Paul says in Colossians whereof I am made a minister he was made a minister not by the school of the prophets a Bible college not by a teaching to preaching course within his congregation he was made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given me for you to fulfill the Word of God amazing so God gave this to him God dispensed this to him as a gift or as a grace he calls it in other places and the Apostle Paul says it was given him to benefit you to fulfill the Word of God and that's his purposes even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of the mystery among the Gentiles, which is, and here it is, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So again, the hope of my glory is Christ. As it said over in Ephesians, in his fullness, that is glory only from Jesus, only by Jesus, that I can hope to attain to. He says, whom we preach, and here is evangelism. We preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to the working which worketh in me mightily. There's a working in Paul, which is the working of God, which is pointing to fulfill the word of God which calls him to preach and warn every man that they could be perfect in Christ. And what a high calling of a minister. Appropriate that we should look at that high calling of a minister and accept that it cannot be of man, neither by man, nor by the will of the flesh. Nor by, it's the same as the born again experience, I believe. It's born of Christ. It's done by Christ, it's through Christ, it's in Christ that any minister hopes to fulfill his calling. Not a method, a calling of Christ. In Christ, by Christ, through Christ, even with Christ. That's how I hope to fulfill the Word of God.